about understanding authority in Bible study. If you wasn't here with Christian, you definitely need to get that um, CD from Brother Stokes. And let them know that you want that CD. It was a very amen, good message on authority. You need to have that in your library. Uh, I'm going to complete that message today. Uh, same topic, but I'm going to come from some different scriptures, but I'm going to deal with the topic of authority. Um, just to backtrack just a little, uh, the topic or the word authority is defined as delegated power. That's what it means. Authority is delegated. To delegate means to give to someone to give them a particular task or a particular duty. That's called delegation. So when you give someone authority or when you give someone power, that's called authority. Delegated power is called authority. Uh, why is it important to understand that? Because authority does not come from you. Amen. No one can create authority. No one can create authority. Authority has to be given to you. There's a difference between power and authority. Uh, power is something where you physically show your strength. You physically show your ability to overcome or to defeat someone or something. That's called power. To overpower someone. That means that you have taken your strength and you have overwhelmed their strength. That's called power. Okay, so we're not dealing with the topic of power because in this spiritual battle that we're in, your power is worthless against your enemy. Very important. I don't care how smart you are, how much money you have, how strong you think you are, your power in this spiritual warfare is worthless. It is in vain. You cannot out strength or out uh, uh, maneuver your enemy. Uh, uh, you are too weak in your flesh to overwhelm your enemy. When I say your enemy, I'm talking about Satan. Now, when we deal with Satan, we deal with him in different forms because we don't deal with Satan as a individual, as a, 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 a um, individual that comes in and out of our lives. We deal with him from the different tools and the different schemes that he used to bring trouble to our life. Uh, uh, when we talk about sickness, that is a tool that the enemy uses to bring trouble. Depression, that's a tool that the enemy uses to attack us. Uh, opposition, oppression, um, a lack of self-esteem. These are all tools that the enemy will use against the believer to push him down, to hold him back, uh, 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 to stop him and cause him to be unsuccessful uh, uh, in his life as a Christian. So when we deal with the enemy, we are dealing with his tactics. We're dealing with his maneuvers, his schemes, the things that he's doing against us. Uh, uh, why is it that I'm always running out of money? Hmm. Why is it when I, I work and I, I, I do what I'm supposed to do, but it seems like I can't, I can't get enough money? I got, I'm always uh, 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 running in the red. Why is that? That is a tactic of the enemy. It's hmm. called lack. It's a spirit of lack that will rest on your life if you allow it to and cause you to always be in a position where you don't have enough. Depression. Depression don't come from God. Depression uh, 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 does not, it is not uh, uh, a spirit from God. Depression is a demonic spirit where it uh, puts you down or weighs you down in your spirit, begins you to feel downtrodden. Uh, uh, you begin to feel beat up and, and overwhelmed by life or whatever you're going through. Feel like you can't make it. Feel like you don't want to do better, can't do better. That is a spirit of depression. It comes on you to weigh you down, to push you down, to cause you to be defeated in your life. A spirit of unworthiness where you don't feel like uh, uh, you're worthy or, 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 or even a spirit of condemnation. We talked about this in Bible study. Condemnation never comes from God. Anytime you feel like you are condemned or broken down in your spirit, that is not of God. The Bible says, I did not give you a spirit of, 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 of fear, but of, of a spirit of love and of a sound mind. So anytime you are afraid or fearful, that spirit did not come from God. It came from your enemy. It came to oppress you, to push you down, to make you feel defeated, to make you stop trying and give up. That's his tool. That's the weapon. 
words that he used. So as a believer, he doesn't have the right to overwhelm me or just come into my life and make me do something. But what he does is he uses different tools and tricks to cause me to give up within myself. If I can beat you mentally, I don't have to beat you physically. If I can control you mentally, I don't have to control you physically. If I can get up here, I don't have to put any chains on you because I'm up here. And so the enemy's desire is to stay up here. The enemy's desire is to live up here because if he can get him a house, if he can build a house in my mind, mm. then he can control my life. Amen. If he can build a house in my mind, then he can control the way I raise my children. If he can build a house in my mind, he can control the places that I go and the things that I do and even the things that I say out of my mouth. He can control the way I feel about me. Yes. That's what uh, 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 um, <laughs> depression does. That's what uh, uh, a lack of self-esteem does. It controls the way you feel about yourself. You don't feel good about yourself. You don't love yourself. You don't appreciate yourself. You don't value yourself. A lot of times he will allow that spirit to come in because of some things we have gone through, some things we have experienced, some things that have happened to us that will open the door of, 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 of that unworthy and unworthless spirit to come in and begin to operate and manipulate us in our lives. But you have to understand that it's all a trick of the enemy. And that if he is allowed to build a house in your mind, then he will control your life. He will control the places you go, the things you do, the, place, uh, the clothes you wear. He will control you because you have allowed him to build his house in your mind. So when we deal with the, um, the topic of authority, once again, authority is delegated power. It is power that is given to me. It's not what you can make up yourself. In other words, if you are not under authority, you don't have any authority. Amen. I'm going to say that again. If you are not under authority, then you don't have any authority. You might have power, but you don't have authority. Just because, and let me deal with the topic of power, just because you are physically stronger than me don't mean you are able or that you have authority over me. Because physically, you can make me do something. Mm -hmm. But my heart is not submitted to you. Amen. Let me give you another illustration. Mm -hmm. If I tell my daughter to wash dishes, she's going to wash the dishes. Not because she's necessarily submitted to my authority, but because she understands my power. If she was submitted to my authority, then she could wash the dishes without being angry, without griping, without mumbling. She would do it because she has brought herself under my authority. But if she does it and she's angry and upset and murmuring while she's doing it, it's because she's fearful of my power. She's not really under my authority. Mm. And the only reason why she's doing it is because she don't want to see the physical side manifest. So that's the difference between power and authority. You can take a man and lock him up in prison, and because he's in prison, he's not able to go out and rob somebody, but that doesn't change his heart. If his heart is not being changed, when you remove the bars, he's going to rob again because power is not the same as authority. Yeah. And so God's desire is not to use power as much as it is to use authority to bring us under his control, to change my heart. So that my desires are no longer to rob a bank, but it's to be submitted to God. And so when my desire change, you don't have to put a chain on me because the chain is on my heart. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So that's the difference between authority and power. Authority is the operation of the spirit, operation of the heart. I bring my spirit under your spirit. And authority is something that has to be done willingly. This is very important, especially in marriage situations. You cannot force somebody to be under your authority. They have to submit to your authority. If they don't submit to your authority, then I don't care how much you scream and yell, you can't make them be under your authority. I don't care how many uh, cameras you put in the house and the uh, uh, GPS you put on this and that. If they are not submit, if they don't willingly submit to your authority, then you can do about it. There's nothing you can, uh, to submit to 
is someone's authority. It is an act of your will. It is something I make a decision to do. I decide that I'm going to come under your authority. And let me explain this also. To submit to my authority, if my wife, let me use my marriage as an example, if my wife submits to my authority, she doesn't do it because she thinks I'm better than her. She don't do it because she thinks I'm smarter than her. She does it because it is the way that God has ordained the house to be run. Amen. And so to really understand authority, it takes a strong person Amen. to be under authority. Yeah. It takes a strong individual to submit, to willingly submit themselves under authority. Now the world will tell you not to do it. The world will tell you to do your, to, uh, do, your do what you want to do when you want to do it and, and all of this kind of stuff, but that's the world. We are not of the world. We are of the world, the word of God, the kingdom of God, and we live our lives as such. Amen. See, when I was young, y'all gonna just allow me to teach. I'm not gonna preach, but I'm gonna try to teach this this morning. When I was young, going to my parents' house, living in my parents' house, I had rules, I had regulations, I had structure. And as a child, you don't understand the purpose for rules, regulations, structure. A lot of times you think it's against you, but really it's not against you, it's for your best. Because mama has been where you're going, dad has been where you're going, so they try to keep you, to protect you from making the same mistakes they have made. Amen. But as a child, we grow up and we buck against those rules. And I know, I speak for myself, one of the things I used to say was, I can't wait till I get wrong. Mm -hmm. I just say that all the time. Mm -hmm. I can't wait till I get wrong. I can't wait till I get Because when I get wrong, I can do whatever I want to do. Mm -hmm. I can go wherever I want to go. I can talk to whoever I want, I can do. And see, that was the deception of the enemy. Because, listen, the older you get, the less freedom you have. Period. 
you have more and more restrictions, more and more responsibility, more and more obligations. And that's what defines us as mature individuals, the ability to handle responsibility, the ability to handle life, the ability to get hit and keep fighting, the ability to have something go contrary to the way I want to go, but I still keep pushing, I keep fighting. Why? Because I understand I have a responsibility. But when you become an adult, it's not about you anymore. It's not about you anymore. It's not about your happiness anymore. It is about those that you have brought into this world. It's about those who are looking to you to, to, to feed and provide and to stand and to be strong. So you have a greater responsibility than yourself. Same thing with Christ. When you become a Christian, your responsibility goes to Christ and not you. Man. You have to submit yourself under your authority. When you was in the world, you could do what you want to do. But now that you have come to Christ, you don't have the right to do what you want to do anymore. You don't have the right to dress the way. Well, I'm grown. No, you're not grown. You are a believer. You don't have the right to wear what you want to wear. You are a child of God, and you must submit yourself under his authority. When you say Jesus is the Lord of my life, what you're saying is he is my God, he is my overseer, he is my master. I am under his authority. That's what you're saying. Every time you say Jesus is the Lord of my life, you're saying that his authority. I'm, I'm going to live by his rules, his regulations. I'm not going to do it my way. I don't have the right to do it my way anymore because I have been bought with his blood. Yes. Now, if you deliver yourself, then you can serve yourself. Hmm. Still talking about authority. If you brought yourself out, then you can serve yourself. You. If you heal your own body, mm -hmm. then go ahead and serve yourself. If you deliver your child at the hospital, then go ahead and serve yourself. But if it was God who did it, Amen. when you cannot help yourself, when you cannot defend yourself, if it was God who stepped in between you and calamity, you and poverty, you and depression, you and a broken street, if it was God who intervened, then you don't belong to yourself anymore. You don't have the right to do it your way. I paid for you with my blood. Therefore, you must glorify me with your life. That means I have to come under his authority. I come under his authority. When I come under his authority, then he gives me authority. Very important. When I submit myself under the authority of Christ, then Christ then gives me authority. He cannot give it to me until I submit. No matter how much I say I love him, no matter how much I read my Bible, no matter how much church going I do, until I submit to him, he cannot give me authority. Because it is me submitting to him that says to him, I'm going to do it your way. I'm going to do it your way. I'm going to say what you say. I'm going to go where you say. Because if I give you this before you are submitted to me, ain't no telling what you're going to do. Amen. Absolute power corrupts. I'm going to say that again. Absolute power corrupts. People who do not humble themselves under authority, if you give them power, they're going to show up with it. Every time. That's why you got police officers who don't know how to be police officers. They got a little bit of authority and they do all kind of foolishness that they ain't got no business doing because their the power, the position that they have has gone to their head and now they want to treat you like a dog because you are not a police officer like they are. That's because people who are not submitted under authority, if you give them power, if you give them authority, they don't know how to handle it. They don't know how to handle it. They're going to mess it up. They're going to use it to abuse somebody, to hurt somebody. And that's why you must be under authority so that when I give you this um, ability, you won't misuse it. Yeah. You won't hurt nobody with it. You won't abuse nobody. You won't rob nobody. Why? Because you are Man. The Bible says to the married, to the to people looking for, for spouses, he said, listen, don't get une unequally yoked. Don't, don't, don't find nobody who's not submitted to his authority. He says, don't find nobody who's not submitted to me. Because if they're not submitted to me, ain't no telling what they're going to do. Ain't no telling what they're going to do. Because they're not under my authority. So nobody, know, nobody knows what they're going to do when they get angry. 